Welcome to the Family History Foundation and thank you for tuning into this channel and uh, today is something super super exciting for you genealogy buffs, records buffs, ancestry searchers, researchers. Um, if you uh, want to know about Castle Garden, do you know what Castle Garden is? Do you know the extent of its importance to uh, the United States history and our records and knowing who we are and where we come from? Well this is going to be the best, most informative uh, lecture situation for you here. We're going to look over Castle Garden immigration records and a bit about history about the place because uh, there are places like Castle Garden and Castle Clinton, which uh, are known in different circles, uh, but actually are the same thing. So we're going to talk about why, and we're going to look at where to find the records, and we're going to leave you with everything that you need to know to get started. Uh, especially if you are into genealogy. So again, thank you for listening in to the Family History Foundation. And if you find what we do of value, take the time to like and subscribe to what we have going on here. That is super, super appreciated. So here we go. Castle Garden. Okay. If you have not heard of Castle Garden, maybe you have. Maybe you've heard of Ellis Island. If you have heard of Ellis Island, obviously, uh, you may or may not know that there is a related site uh, that predates, when I say site, I mean a uh, physical processing location that processed uh, immigrants coming into the United States that predates Ellis Island. So if you're looking for genealogical records and you're like, can't find it on an Ellis Island site, well, hey, we got you hooked up because Castle Garden is the predecessor. Um, and thankfully, as I'm sort of trying to allude to, uh, both sites are connected uh, via records nowadays. But it's good to know which was which and which populations are at least time periods or, or ranges of years that they served. And so we're going to start off with the term Castle Garden, okay? And it's, it's also known by Castle Clinton, okay? So when we use the terms throughout this uh, video here, Castle Garden, and Castle Clinton, right now they are interchangeable in the present day, okay? Castle Clinton, Castle Garden. When we speak of immigration records and genealogy, Castle Garden is what it is known as, okay? It later became class Castle Clinton and uh, for various reasons that we'll talk about. But it was the very first immigration processing station in the United States, okay, before uh, Ellis Island, okay, so it was the very first, uh, which pre predated even Ellis Island. And the important part is your records may be there, so that's why it's super important to know if you're researching where your ancestors came in through the port of New York um, during between 1855 and 1954. That's like almost 100 years, isn't it? Uh, so it's very, very important because a lot of people came through there okay so it is stationed in new york harbor at the very lower tip of manhattan island kind of across the bay from ellis island so castle garden sits directly across the water from its sister station as i call it ellis island and what makes it important um, is that really when you th think about this castle garden uh, processed over eight million immigrants between the years of 1855 and 1891, that's a lot. Eight million people passed through Castle Garden, so it's not something that's inconsequential to our research in our country. So Ellis Island took over the following year as the government-run facility from 1892 all the way up until 1854 and processed over 12 million people. Right, so 4 million difference, 20 million total, right? Think about 20 million people that pass through both Castle Garden and Ellis Island. So it's important um, to understand uh, how Castle Garden relates to Ellis Island. Why did Ellis Island take over in 1892? Well, we'll talk about that, okay? But the range of years is quite significant. And most, you know, like, there was a immigration spike after you know, the 1890s, and usually this is why Ellis Island took over and processed more, uh, but it's very important if you have early ancestors that came in between, you know, the late 1850s and 60s, 70s, 80s, that your records would lie with Castle Garden, okay? So 
uh, in addition to searching other side of the records, uh, also make sure you're searching Castle Guardians, okay? Which thankfully, and I have to say this, uh, when you're searching Ancestry and Family Search, they do now include both sets of records. So let me say that again, so you're not sort of scared going, oh my gosh, did I search for something and not finding it? So if you're searching Ancestry, and I can only speak for Ancestry and Family Search, they do combine both when you're searching. Okay, so that's very, very important to know. And I'll give you a little snapshot here. Okay, so this is over on Ancestry's page, and I've linked direct linked the site below, and it says New York, US arriving passengers and crew list, and it says in parentheses, just to let you know, it includes Castle Garden and Ellis Island. Okay, so uh, this is a view of uh, Castle Garden, Castle Clinton um, in 1850, okay? And the records availability, if you go to, I'll link the direct link to this article here, uh, you can search Ancestry's records, and I just showed you what that looks like. And also Family Search, which is another uh, if you're not familiar with tool uh, like Ancestry that's free to register and the records are free, whereas Ancestry is more of a paid subscri subscription site. Family Search is run by the Mormon Church, the LDS Church, so records are sort of free, but you have to sign up. Um, and their search engines, I think, are a lot better than Ancestry's, which are completely wonky to me some days. But uh, um, one of my <laughs> research tips that I offer in a different article is that sometimes I just use Google instead of Ancestry's actual. Uh, you know, in-house search records. <laughs> I think they want you to get lost in the records is my sort of opinion on that. But uh, So links to the article are here and then links to these direct, so you don't have to sort of fuss around and find them, are uh, on this article on my onfamilyhistoryfoundation.com. Okay, big plug there. <laughs> Check us out over there. Uh, so Castle Garden is the genealogical moniker um, uh, known as AKA Castle Clinton to non-genealogy folk, okay? The new, two names are interchangeable, again, so that you don't so you don't get confused. But what's interesting to note, um, those two names are actually uh, one of many that this site actually had going back to 1626, okay? And it had five different names since 1626. Uh, and it started out as, I'll give you the genealogy here, it started out as Fort Amsterdam, then became West Battery, then Fort Clinton, then Castle Clinton, then Castle Garden. Okay, so it went through this evolution of different sites. It's kind of really a neat place. Um, confused yet? Well, read on to find out why, okay? So let's kind of scoot over to Castle Garden immigration history so you kind of get a broader context. <clears throat> Castle Clinton was originally built in 1808, okay, over 10 years after the Revolutionary War, at a time when talks of war with Great Britain were once again resuming, right? And if you know anything about U.S. history, this would eventually lead to the War of 1812, okay? And which was colloquially known as the Second Revolutionary War. It was very close in scope and uh, in terms of time and in terms of sort of, uh, you know, the politics behind it. So actually from 1804, I mean, sorry, 1808, until 1814, right, 1808 to 1814, this structure was known as West Battery. And why I bring in the War of 1812 and sort of the sphere of war is because the name comes from uh, a fortification of war to protect and command recess resources in a theater of combat. That's what a battery is. So it's West Battery, uh, right after its name, Castle Clinton, became West Battery. Um, and it was formally changed to Castle Clinton in 1850, 1815, and then renamed Castle Garden sometime around 1855, okay? And although I still know my both, latter refers to its uh, use in genealogical circles, okay? And it became the very first immigrant processing station. So there it is, it has some heft, it has some girth, it has some cred, right? Because it was the first processing station. And uh, the original Castle Clinton site sits near to an original fort which was built sometime around 1626 by the first European inhabitants of New York City, the Dutch. Okay, not many people know that the original, original name of New York was actually New Amsterdam. And of course the fort was called Fort Amsterdam after the Dutch, okay? And so Castle Clinton 
uh, was constructed but never saw any action during the War of 1812, and so it was with Castle Garden. And this is kind of a view of Castle Clinton from 1880 that I uh, sourced from Wikimedia, so pretty neat how you have this like sort of historical view of this lower part over here, which is the Castle Garden, Castle Clinton area. And you can see why a fort would be built here, because it kind of intersects these major waterways protecting inland. So. Um, so continuing on, there's the genealogy of the place, and maybe we'll leave the image up a little bit here. Uh, from 1790 until 1820, the process of allowing European immigrants into the United States, um, or even 18, 1790 was still the newly formed United States, it's always good to keep that kind of stuff in mind while doing genealogical research. When you're talking about the 1820s, it, it's so good to remind yourself, it's like, we were still a very, very new country. Yeah, um, not even a generation old yet. And uh, so the process of allowing immigrants into the United States at that time was somewhat corrupt and unregulated, okay, because it was a new thing. And it wasn't until 1820, and this is very, very important for genealogy, it wasn't until 1820 that ships were required to provide ships manifests for all passengers to keep track and better understand who was entering the country. Very, very, very important. You think more paperwork, more bureaucracy, but honestly, as historians and genealogists today, we have everything to thank for that because all the records we have are because they took care of them and we have them to look over, you know, this far into the future, right? A hundred years from, you know, and more right so uh, genealogically speaking that was a blessing for all of us today we, without these we would not have any way of tracking our ancestors and I have found great grandparents and ancestors on these ship manifests and I have a link to an article here in this article and I'll kind of open it up for here but it's uh, how to find your ancestors on a ship manifest four tricks so these are some of my trip tricks that I've used successfully to find my own genealogy digs and I'll leave a link directly to it in the description box you can find it and uh, definitely need to uh, <clears throat> you guys need to think more about that if you <laughs> need to process so anyway uh, and uh, years of immigration processing again Castle Clinton 8 million Ellis Island 12 million right 20 million people think about the size of that 20 million ancestors right and if you think about a, a genealogical tree and how many uh, kids each of those 20 million would have had and where they went and how they flourished that's a lot of that's a lot of offspring uh, of which we are today to to look back to right if that makes sense okay so the castle clinton monument uh, is a national monument right situated at the very bottom of manhattan island just west of brooklyn and across the bay from new jersey and it sits in new york city's historical district so it's a monument today if you want to go visit it here it is on a little Google Maps pin, and we're going to zoom in on this so you can kind of see a little bit more, but it's right here at the very, very bottom of Manhattan, right, sandwiched between Brooklyn, Newark, right, so we know kind of where it is geographically, and you can zoom in, and it's, given its relatively small size, Castle, because of, because of its size, Castle Clinton was unable to process the volumes of people coming over to the United States during the years of 1855 to 1891. It was just flush with people and they just couldn't handle it because of space. So as numbers and demographics increased, uh, coupled with wanting to sort of quarantine away, Ellis Island took over as the chosen site to incre meet increasing demands, how to house the sick and process uh, sort of away from the mainland so that you could have a, a little bit more controlled environment enter historic Ellis Island and I like to say these are like two sisters looking at each other from across the water so right lower Manhattan Castle Clinton right and Ellis Island's right over here and Statue of Liberty so right this is where everything was processed within a stone's throw or if you got a good arm stone's throw from one another okay and again you'll notice above that Ellis Island sits just north of the Statue of Liberty right um, and a fun fact, <laughs> and kind of keep this in mind if you're doing research, if your ancestors passed through Castle Garden, 
you have early ancestors. But think about this, they may or may not have seen the Statue of Liberty, right? It's so iconic. We think of the ships coming in, going to Ellis Island, and oh, there's this beautiful Statue of Liberty welcoming people to the United States. But if you have ancestors that came through the early version of it, they actually wouldn't have seen it because the Statue of Liberty wasn't erected until 1886. So if your ancestors came prior to that, um, in the first sort of operational years or decade of Castle Clinton, they would have sailed into the harbor and not seen the Statue of Liberty. How how mind blowing is that to even say? Or it may be a, it may have been under construction, but it's kind of a neat twist on you know your story of genealogy, right? So genealogy to me are more like dates and names and places. But if you're writing a family history, it's the stories, and this is why we are the Family History Foundation because. We're about the stories, we're about the era and the times before and after and who people were. So, you know, this might be a fun story to tell. It's like, oh, my ancestor came into the United States in 18, you know, 1880. And man, when they came in, there was no Statue of Liberty. I mean, it's just kind of cool. And maybe there's a story about them hearing about it or seeing it being built after they landed. And so there's, there's so much that we can uncover about who we are through the stories that came, of people that came before us. Okay, so, and you can see that Castle Clinton National Monument sits in this historical district. And here's kind of another map before we kind of close out here. Um, and our, again, just to remind you, um, both of these Castle Garden and Ellis Island repositories are online and if you search ancestry or family searches databases and the links again are in this article you can head over from the description box to this and check it out it'll take you directly to ancestry and you can kind of dig right into those databases um, and the sources are different as well from site to site from ancestry to family search so use both of them I like to recommend um, yeah so again thanks for checking this out you can see exactly where this is on a map, Google Maps here, right? You have the uh, National Monument sitting down in Lower Manhattan, uh, and the Ellis Island Foundation, ironically, is just across the street on Battery Place, New York Stock Exchange, Federal Reserve Bank, Wall Street Plaza, giving you a little bit of sort of things around you. And uh, thanks again for checking us out online. We are the Family History Foundation.com. If you like what you see, share this obviously, share it to everybody. And uh, uh, like and subscribe if you have the time and the inclination and I uh, want to leave you with have a great, great, fantastic, fantastic day and enjoy life.